Hi oh, there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got another video I'm going to put together on uh, model planning and sketching over images to plan out how you might structure a CAD model, uh, whether it be surface patches or extrudes, etc. So this time I'm going to focus on chairs, chairs only. Uh, last time there was a mixed bag of uh, products, as you can see here. Yeah, but this time I've decided just chairs, so I've got a range of different forms here. So I'm just going to drop back my images a bit and block that layer. And I'll get down to some uh, sketching. So I haven't, apart from sourcing these images online, I haven't actually gone through yet and had a, a, a pre-sketch or anything like that about how I might um, approach modelling these. So... Uh, let's start up here. So this one here is quite interesting because there's there's multiple layers and they all end up matching up with this outside edge here. So this one here goes in, you can see, and then it deviates and it goes underneath this surface here. Even though at this point and this point the surfaces match back up and Presumably, as far as I can tell, the tangent or curvature continuous at that point. So, when creating this, I'd imagine you would create a, a number of surfaces. So, let's have a look at this angle here. This angle might be a bit better to sketch over. So, because this is a very sort of open form like this, I'd probably be inclined to create it as a an overbuilt surface like that and then trim it back but what that might do is create some problems because you want all of these elements matching back up exactly to this outside edge so if you overbuilt the surface and then you trim it back there could be some and you and you deviated the surface through the middle here like you'd have to create some this makes sense to create some deviation um, to get the different depths, the different layers, then that could cause some um, issues when you come to the outside here because there could be some deviation. So that now makes me think maybe maybe they built it as an over overbuilt surface. So let's have a look to get around that problem. What you could do is Oh look, this isn't going to match properly, but anyway, you'll get the idea. Um, build it as an overbuilt surface, and then trim out to this outer, this orange boundary here. So trim out to there, uh, which leaves us with this surface. Okay, and then um, you could then trim out a band around here. The distance is far enough to give you a nice blend. Uh, and then build some surface patches back in there. So four-sided surfaces. Like that. And what that would allow you to do is have this big blue surface here, this one. Uh, you could build that as... The, the With different profiles, so you have the same outside profiles here. And then you just deviate your sections through the middle. I'm just exaggerating this like that. And then when you come in here and trim out this area, that means you can blend back in uh, between your various surface heights here. And they'll all match up exactly on this edge here. Okay, I think that's enough on that chair. Um, right, it's got some interesting stuff going on the front here with the legs. Hard to tell without an underside shot, but this kind of thing you'd um you'd loft maybe this section here, and then this opens up like a trumpet here. And having worked on a seat like this before, uh, there will be probably a split line run, running along here, so you'll have to do some interesting draft um, work there. But I'd imagine that top would just be a you know like a trumpet sort of. Like so, four-sided surface running down onto that that lofted or extruded or leg 
not an extrude because it's got taper on it. Yep. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, we'll go up here. So this chair, quite a fluid form with some tricky junctions. So I'd imagine if I was going to model this, I'd define areas that are similar or like as a um, this leg, the section looks fairly similar. So it's probably got some tapering down here, but I I'd set up and construct this first. Whether that's a loft or a sweep or something like that. So I'd create that first. Uh, then I'd create the back leg because that looks very similar. Sorry if this is noisy, this is this uh, paper-like uh, screen protector I've got on this iPad. I noticed the microphone picks up quite a lot of noise, so... Okay, so I'll model the legs like that first, and then we'll go in and model this, the back, the back rest. So that looks like it's a series of... You could have a series of sections, like that. And then loft or boundary surface or something to make that. Um, and then the trickiest bit, probably, looking at this, will be the, the T-junction in here. So T-junction, as you can see here, so you've got, especially this back here, because you've got quite a lot of form change, you want to capture that area there, and then... You could probably build this first by building um, a cylinder through there and then look at once you've built the cylinder because you want to sort of create keep that line running through you don't want to interrupt the highlight through here so and we've got the leg down here and I'd imagine some construction set up you need to trim back that cylinder so, in this case, probably a an elliptical or a, um, you know what I mean, that kind of trim. And then you build the surface like a, like a trumpet again. So you can build it in as four patches. One, two, three, four. That makes sense. Two, three, and four on the other side, or you could try and do it all in one go. Um, but you might have trouble with tangencies. You uh, obviously have to look at your tangency up here. Um, yeah. So I think that'll probably be the area of greatest difficulty on that chair. Okay. Um, what are we going to do now? I'll look at this one. This one's got like a disappearing or a, um, disappearing edges or, or like a flared surface. So to create this, I'd probably build the seated surface first. So um, trim that back. Like that, and then off that drum, start working out these then perhaps build surface around like that. This is gonna get tricky in here. you're gonna have to maybe even build this as an overbuilt surface um to some point. down to here, like that, and then, and then you're going to have to go in, you trim this whole area out, in here, because you want to create the, um, like the bonnet scope kind of thing, you know, because the surface is deviating inwards. 
you trim this all out and then you create another four-sided surface and then run a the the blend in between i'll just sketch this out somewhere else because it's a bit hard to see okay so you got those surfaces uh then you're going to trim out an area there so the surface is uh that's the center line on that surface then you've got the the bonnet scope surface underneath so that's that center line there so that's a four four sided surface that's deviating away from the blue surface and then you want to create you don't want to have these surfaces here uh, running in like this because we want to have enough space here to fit a four sided surface um, the blend all the way around like so so yeah you don't want to run if you're doing a bonnet scope kind of thing you don't want to run those two surfaces like the deviating surface and then the master surface into a point because that will create nasty twisting on the blend where the blend comes down in here okay uh, and then to finish that chair up just like trim out the front here get rid of that bit okay um don't want to do the rabbit yet let's have a look at this one um so this this surface as simple as it, simple as it looks it still has some interesting um it's one of these surfaces i think when you look at it from this angle here these look straight but as you can see in here it kind of deviates um so i'd imagine quite a tricky one to actually resolve especially in wood so to build this i'd create the extremity curves like this um would i overbuild it um maybe build this top section here so you can really get this working well and then and then work on on this surface here like this curve here build the surface um afterwards it's almost like a rolled surface through here um because you've got to remember this is this is timber so just around there that'd be another way to do it just ruled surface or or just have a a bottom profile and a top profile and define those side curves and then uh, tweak that top curve um, until you get a sort of like a pseudo uh, ruled surface and then go back in and trim off trim out this material here leaving you with that section yeah quite a tricky one i think probably quite a lot of constraints on it because it's in wood okay um this is another one that's in wood um formally this is so the frame as far as i understand is solid timber and then it's got like a a um a ply seat and back as you can see down here so you can see the part line uh, not the part line you can see the edge of the plywood running around here and quite strong chamfer uh, forms so in this case i would say there's probably areas on here that are that may be uh planar like this front area maybe that's planar or the side here maybe this area 
So if there are areas that are planar, you want to set those up first, set those planes up. And, and then really ignore corner radii like this, because um, otherwise you end up with like lots of surface patches, um, which might be a bit fiddly. Again, overbuild that. So you want to crack the, the primary edges first. Uh, and then you can go back in and 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 figure out how the seat goes with the center, uh, the sections on the center line stuff. But this area here, which looks like a, you know, looks like a the classic Y junction challenge, um, that could be easily built. Like depending on what this is, if, if it is planar through an area, you'd probably build. You know, if that's a plane, you just draw the planar area as a planar surface. So there's no problems trying to make it as a as a uh, as a Y junction. But yeah, it all depends on the intent there. Um, yeah, and then I think yeah, as I said, it's just a matter of defining these main lines first. Probably work from the outside. Inwards, do these first and then work on the underside. Um, hard to tell, but I think the legs look like they're a triangular section, like, like a triangular section. Anyway, okay, let's move on to okay, we're getting into the blobby forms now. Okay, this guy here, well, this one, as you can see, it's already got some some handy lines for us already. So we've got like the center line, um, and there's one running around the width of the, like the silhouette edge from a plan view. So I think you need to break this down into, I'll break this down into, like try and make a central section first. Let's change color. So that area, this area here, and then crack the side profile here. Um, do that on both sides, whether you'd want to mirror this or not. Um, and then you want to create like a center line also for that. A bit there, and then there's one on the back. And so then you basically just got, you just kind of lock together those two. Two forms basically, the front and the rear. Okay, so once you've created that surface, it's time to build these ends. Um, so in that case, you probably want to define the center line, one direction and in the second direction. Um, and this is where it gets tricky. Like, how do you, how do you finish this? Okay, there's several ways you could do this. You could, let's just say that's the end of the main form. You could, you've got these two sections. You could build a four-sided surface through here. So that's one, two, three, and four sides. And which leaves you these open sides here to finish off. Uh, to finish them off, you could, uh, if you want to make them four-sided, well, you could just use a fill surface and be done with it. Or you can... Trim back like so, so you end up with four sides. So you got one, two, three, four. Um, or you could You 
could. How could we do this? Um, you could do what I did just before, like with this little nice four-sided surface through there, so you get this nice starting surface, like I did here. Do that, and then you trim it back here and here. No, sorry, don't trim it back there. Trim it back here, so you end up with just like a nose. Okay, I'll draw that out, and I'll draw that in plan view. Might be easier. Okay, so we've got that main form coming up, and you build a four-sided surface here. So you've got a four-sided surface like that, and then you trim it through here leaving you with this end but when you trim it you have to trim it so this trim is within here because we want to end up with a with just a nose cone sort of shape i know you're chopping out a lot of this area but that means everything's lining up and then you can just build on um patches to join those up okay so that is so that is you build a, a surface, you trim it back, so you end up with just this piece, like that. Then you already have this center line here, you already have this line here, you have that line, you have that line. And you go in and you build one, two, three, four surfaces. Okay, so they're four side patches and you can get G2 on each side yep bit of fussing around there okay enough of that one i think this form here is pretty much the same i don't know if there's much to talk about um let's just have a sketch anyway there might be another way to do it so very much it again i'll just do it the same way i think like create this main section first, like that. You could um, you could trim this um, so in plan view. And there's your center line, and this is like a construction curve for the end. You could potentially do this trim like I did. Uh, in my Model 1 planning up here, where are we? Yeah, so you could do something like this. Okay, um, and then build that in, build this in as a four-sided surface, but it's a bit, be multiple surfaces because you're obviously um, trimming like this, and then on the underside as well. So it's a, it's a bit more complicated. Probably want to build it out of four surfaces. Well, if you're mirroring it, just two. Or one even. Like that. Yeah, so another way. Okay, so it was worth looking at. Because that's... This is different to over here. Okay. Okay, let's look at this. This is the chair, I know. This, this is the bunny. So, what's a good colour? Purple. So the bunny, the main form. Um, guessing there's a centre line across the ground. Down around here. Um, and then the footprint on the ground. And then... around section through here and then the ears are so I break this looking at the form you want to break it down into some elements here I know it all looks like it's one uh, one form smushed together but it's not really like you can break out some elements though I would I've identified two areas 
like there is the main body here, like from here down. So let's color that. So um, you could potentially do that as one element, and this looks asymmetric. So so the ears, this area here. So you break it into some core sort of some base elements there. So I'll probably model this area here first. Um, you put some more sections in. Uh, you could possibly, I'm guessing, have some trouble around here because the, the, the curvature is quite tight under the, under the chin. But you could maybe even build, maybe even build around to a, oh that's a bad colour, um, build around to a point like here and here, so you build this as one big surface and around the back and then with the chin you could build, so you could build the foot, the front feet here as the second area, so again trying to build bigger surfaces with the more relaxed curvature first like that, and then potentially build this area here. So across the nose, it's got less curvature, and then finally build that, um, build the chin area. So that way, the, the curvature of the chin area, because you're building the chin area uh, after these areas, that means the curvature from the pink areas or the magenta areas is driving the yellow area. If you built the yellow area first or you tried to build it all as one piece, then you might get undue influence from the curvature or the tightness in here, um, upsetting your nice surfaces in top and bottom. Okay, so once you've done that, I'll go and build the ears which look sort of pretty simple cylindrical objects. Cap the ends, um, probably the difficult part there, getting those nice, and I'd refer to doing something like over here or here to cap the ends of the ears off. There will be some fun here because there's some joins uh, where the ears come together, like they'll be. Uh, N-sided, you know, five-sided surface blends. So I'll probably go around the top of the head here, create another surface. Um, I actually feel like modeling this now. Um, I might have a crack at this. This actually looks like a good challenge. Okay, so I've built these, this area out of four-sided surfaces. So, and then the tricky I reckon probably the trickiest part of this model will be blending the ears onto the top of the head. Um, so if we go over here and just do a sketch, so you've got the challenges to model um, this basically. In a nutshell, <laughs> and get that all nice. So. Run down the ears there, I'll probably try and build this bit from the front and back first. So you could build the four-sided surface and on the side. Because remembering this, this looks asymmetric, so you're going to have to do the full build. So you build those two surfaces first, so they're four-sided surfaces. Um, we already have this is a given, and this is a given. So then we could build a four-sided surface, maybe here, and on the back. So we have to build this on the other side as well. And then 
the tricky bit's how you chop up this inside piece. So, in plan view, what we'll have is a weird surface like this. Um, and I don't really like how these, these areas here will be coming in quite at an acute angle to each other, as you can see. So maybe you might need to trim that back. Um, if you trim that back, that means you've got to add more patches in. That's a four, that's a four, that's not a four, um, that's a five. Uh, that makes it a three. Um, anyway, I might come back to this one. Actually, I'm going to have a crack at modelling it, so watch this space. Okay, I'm going to wrap that up. That's model planning number two, looking at chairs, chairs only. Um, I'll come back with another video, maybe something more like details or something like that. Maybe buttons and um, buttons on curved faces, compound curved faces, things like that. Always a challenge. So, yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.